It might be a little bit hard to believe given that I'm just about to graduate as a doctor, but trust me, six years ago, I was in the exact same place as you. I thought I was a failure. I thought I was stupid. I thought that I was never, ever, ever gonna succeed academically ever again. Opening up my results on my A-levels results day was one of the most heart-wrenching days of my life. But not only that, it eradicated this form of identity that I'd built up around being smart and getting good grades over my past 18 years in education. And not only was that day really tough, but all the days that I got bad marks on homeworks, bad marks on my mock exams, got asked a question by a teacher and I had no clue what the answer was. I have been there, I have seen the bottom and I have managed to scrape my way back up to the top. And looking back on those years now, I wish I could give my younger self a shake because getting good grades really isn't as complex as what I once thought. If you're new here, my name is Faye. I am a final year medical student in the UK and the aim of this channel is to share some of my dreadful, dreadful face first belly flopping, floppity flop mistakes in my life in the hope that by imparting the pain that I have suffered from making these mistakes and the lessons that I've learned, you guys can avoid making those mistakes yourself. If living a more successful, fulfilled and balanced life from learning from my mistakes seems like something you would be interested in, then make sure to hit the subscribe button down there. Picture this, it is 2017 and I am staring a teary-eyed 18-year-old Faye right in the face and these are the three strategies I would want to tell her. Lesson number one, the dog did not eat your homework. Let me explain this lesson a little bit by giving you an insight into what my headspace was like. On the day that I opened up my exam results, I was thinking about everyone else's impact on my grades other than myself. I was thinking about the relationship I was in at the time. I was thinking about the teachers who I felt had let me down. I was thinking about my parents maybe for not being encouraging enough or the fact that we had a new specification for our exam and we didn't have much practice questions or the topics that came up were tough and it was just a bad exam. When I opened up those results, I was working my way through every possible cause for those grades apart from maybe it was your own bloody fault. The dog did not eat your homework, enough with the excuses. I completely understand that a lot of them might be true. Your teacher might not have been very encouraging or engaging or good at explaining concepts or in teaching you how to best prepare for the exam or you may have been sick that day and the topics might have been hard or there may not have been adequate resources for the exam that you were sitting. All of those things could be true. Does that mean that you should waste any time thinking about them? Absolutely not. There's a couple of caveats to that if you do think that they're there was a serious issue, obviously raise that with your teacher, the exam board, your family, your friends, whatever. But most of the time, if other people in your class or your year manage to pass, the issue is probably you. It's such a bitter pill to swallow and I am not expecting you to like me very much after I have said this, but if it's any consolation, I was that girl. I was the girl who didn't work hard enough. I was in your shoes and not only that, I didn't have the emotional maturity to separate myself emotionally, look intrinsically and actually think about what it is I could have done to get a better mark. All of your excuses are completely out of your control. You can't set the exam, you don't know what topics are going to come up, you can't improve the teaching skills of your teacher, you can't force your parents or your friends or your family to be more supportive and stop asking you to do things where you need to study. Those are all other people's responsibility. This is just the time that you need to grow up and take responsibility for your own actions. It took me a very long time to realise that guys, I wasted so much time wallowing in self-pity and excuses and I can say, looking back, with hindsight, this not only was a dreadful use of my time, but mentally it was almost as exhausting as if I was blaming it completely on myself. And this is the interesting thing about taking ownership. Of course, initially when you take ownership of your mistakes and take responsibility, most average human beings will take a huge knock to their self-esteem. That is a completely normal response. But once you've got over the huge knock to your ego, then this incredible thing happens. You have ownership and autonomy over what happens next. When you marinate in blaming other people, thinking of excuses, you further this narrative that you're hopeless and vulnerable and need other people to do everything for you for you to succeed. And for me, that was even more damaging than believing that it was just my own fault. And where the first lesson was quite harsh, hard hitting, and may have left you feeling a little bit bruised and emotionally damaged, then this one is a little bit kinder and emotionally reassuring. I don't want to sound cliche, 
away and say that grades don't define you because in a lot of ways they do. They define where you go to university, they define what job you get when you're older. And it's okay to acknowledge that grades will have an impact on your life, but it's also important to acknowledge that we are a whole host of letters in the alphabet. And where we're formally graded in terms of A to U or whatever the numbers are for the kids these days, we all have a whole other host of strengths and weaknesses that get judged on a daily basis and they also define us and impact our life. For example, I am appalling at being on time, like horrendous. It's probably not what I should be admitting, but I do actually think I've given up now. It used to really stress me out because I would try be on time and then when I wasn't on time it would make me very 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 anxious whereas now I think that the people in my life <laughs> are very used to it and I just kind of take that as a little bit of permission to be a little bit late. Not the right attitude at all and for that reason I'm going to give my characteristic of being punctual a solid U. I'm gonna give it a U. On the other hand I would like to say that despite being late and arguably being a bit of a shitty friend in that respect i would say that i am quite a thoughtful friend and i do like to go out of my way to do things for my friends so for that quality i would like to give myself an A. Then you look at medical school. Now guys, I'm not the top scorer in my medical school, but I did a decent bit above average in my medical school and I managed to get my first choice location in London for my first job as a doctor, but I'm never gonna be the brainiest in my cohort. So for medical school, I would probably give myself maybe like a C plus. No, C is like average. Maybe I'd give myself a B. I reckon I'm a B for medical school. And then YouTube, I am not a million subscriber babe, unfortunately, touch wood. If you want to make that happen, then please hit the subscribe button. But I'm not an a million subscribe babe, but I did hit a pretty hefty milestone in summer. I was very proud to hit my 100K milestone. I think my videos are relatively useful and enjoyable, and hopefully you enjoy the editing on them as well. So I would give myself a, I would give myself, for YouTube, I'd give myself a C plus. Hopefully I've made my point. We are a whole assortment of every letter in the alphabet, and one exam is not reflective of your intelligence. That's also true if you do well. I think that Part of the reason I did so badly in my A-levels is I did my GCSEs, did really well in them, and then I took those exams as definitive evidence that I was unstoppably intelligent. Un unperturbedly? I'm trying to think of the word. I'm gonna go with insurmountably. Insurmountably intelligent, and this was incorrect, as I would later find out when I crashed back down to earth and severely struggled with my A-levels. But at the same time, when I got my A-levels back, or even when I was struggling throughout the year, I came to the conclusion that I just used up my intelligence. I'd reached my peak, there was nowhere else for me to go. I did not have a growth mindset, I had a fixed mindset, and I just believed that intelligence is given to us from the gods and once you've reached your limit and you're just not one of the smart kids anymore that's the end of the line for you. I do also recognise that statements like exams don't define you, grades don't define you, but you're so good at other things are just the most condescending comments you absolutely do not want to hear when you have just flopped an exam. I get that. That was me and it's so cliche when everyone is saying all those things to you and they are just not even making a dent on the black hole in your self-esteem on that day but hopefully it means a little bit more coming from me because i have been there guys i've been there and i can tell you grades do affect your life exams do affect your life i couldn't apply to lots of medical schools because i reset my exams and i had to be really 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 specific with the medical schools that would let me in but where there's a will there's a way and that really neatly brings me on to my third and final lesson which is going to talk you through the practical ways to actually get past this and do better, not just deal with the emotional consequences. This lesson I'm gonna call the Sam Smith. Now, if anyone's seen Sam Smith recently, he is looking very different from how he was a couple of years ago. He's getting a lot of hate on social media at the moment, but personally, I have to say, I am f loving it. I always see these TikToks of people commenting underneath saying, where's the old Sam Smith gone? Oh, I miss the old Sam Smith. Guys, the old Sam Smith was wearing a black t-shirt and a silver chain. This Sam Smith is bringing a lot more energy, whether you like what he's wearing or you don't. It is so much more interesting and so much more creative. And on top of this, it just makes my heart warm every time I see how angry it makes people to see someone living their life in their truest, most unapologetic form. But I digress. The reason I've coined this lesson, the Sam Smith, is because we need to make 
the change, just like Sam Smith has done. I'm not saying you have to go out the house in the Squidward pants, but what I am saying is that a lot of the time we think that next time will just be better and we don't actually have to put in the work. And when I say a lot of the time, we think, I mean me. As in, I didn't do well in my year 12 exams. Did that force me to make a change? No. I think because I had this mindset where I was blaming other people, making excuses, the paper was hard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I kept telling myself that it would just be okay. That also probably stemmed from the fact that I'd never done horrendously bad in an exam before. I just saw it as a blip, a data point, an anomaly, a data point that was not in line with my trajectory. And I just lay back. Someone served me up a warning on a silver platter saying, Faye, honey, you're not going to get the grades you need because you haven't been able to get them in your first year. And I completely ignored it. Famous quote from Albert Einstein. You have probably heard it before. I think it's Albert Einstein. It may, may not be. I I said that with such conviction. Insanity is doing the same thing again, but expecting different results. I may have paraphrased that pretty poorly, but the essence is don't f***ing do the same thing again and expect different results. If it was a tough paper or a bad day for you because you were sick or any of these other excuses that if you've listened to this video, you've put to the back of your mind, by not ignoring the warning and upping your game and putting in strategies to make sure it doesn't happen again, let's say that it was a bad day for you health-wise, you weren't feeling on top form or the test was actually really hard or you were really stressed, your mind was preoccupied, whatever. You have two options. You can either plan for the worst case scenario, which is you just didn't study hard enough, or you can hope for the best case scenario, which is that it was someone else's fault but if you choose option A, you may come out doing a lot better than you thought. But if you choose option B, you're taking the risk that you are going to feel exactly the way you felt after the next exam. I'm saying make the change, but Faye, Faye, what change? How do I know what change to make? I have three further sub sections for the Sam Smith. Number one, it is removing the ego, stepping back and analysing what went wrong and not what went wrong for other people, what went wrong for you. For example, if you are blaming your teacher and you're saying that they didn't cover a topic in as much detail as you wanted to, or they didn't explain it well enough, take that on yourself and say, right, well, next time I am gonna go through the exam specification that is probably freely available online to make sure that there's nothing that they might have missed. Or if you felt that the questions were unfairly difficult, moving forward, try practice really difficult questions. Or if it's a new exam or specification and you're a little bit confused about what resources to use, Team up with friends, split the workload. There is no need for you to be doing in-depth research into the nitty gritty of a spec or criteria for an exam when probably everyone in your class is in the same boat and you can all work on that together. Obviously those are all things that might've gone wrong if it was other people. Also, you may just have not worked hard enough. For me, my attendance in sick form, I would say was my biggest downfall. It was atrocious, like, horrific. I convinced myself that I studied better at home. I do agree. I learn better independently. There's no two ways about it. There's a lot of medical school content that I found it a lot more beneficial to go through myself than to go into lectures. But the issue was not the lessons as such, but I think it was getting out of bed was a big one because I think I'd convinced myself that I worked better at home than I wouldn't get out of bed and I'd just relax and chill all day, watch Netflix, not actually get anything done. Whereas at least if I'd gone in school, I would have done something. Number two, I mentioned in my flop video that one of my chemistry teachers said that he didn't think I'd make it to university, let alone medical school. And obviously that was a very pleasant thing to hear. I did think it was a little bit unfair. However, there's a reason that all my teachers came to that conclusion about me. I didn't go in, I didn't really engage. I didn't really do my homework. I wasn't a good student. Also, if you're the type of person who does work better independently, just have that conversation with your teachers. And yeah, like maybe my teachers weren't that encouraging. Maybe I did feel a little bit nervous asking them for help a lot of the time, but there's a reason for that. I think it was a two way street and I did not show them a lot of respect either. Obviously six years down the line, this does make a lot more sense considering I now have an, a diagnosis of ADHD. And not that that's an excuse, but it does definitely explain a lot of those behaviours. Another one of my downfalls is, to be honest, I didn't actually know how to study properly. I think where I'd just been pretty brainy up until the age of 16, when the exams were a lot simpler and a lot easier, I didn't work that hard for my GCSEs. And then when it came to exams that you couldn't just fluke, I 
had no idea what to do. I, I had absolutely no idea what to do because of this when I actually got to medical school I shat myself a little bit because I'd worked so hard just to get to medical school to then realize that maybe I'd throw myself in the deep end and actually everyone around me was probably right and I did not belong in medical school because I did not know how to study properly I invested so much time into learning about effective study techniques now this was my first experience with study tube and there are some incredible resources on YouTube all about how to study effectively efficiently and activities that are actually backed up by science. When I got to medical school and I invested this time in how to study, I suddenly found that I was working nowhere near as hard as I had been to resit my A-levels, but I was getting much better grades. That kind of leads me on to another excuse that I had when I did badly. I blamed it on going out and doing stuff with my friends, my family, my boyfriend. And now I do all that. I see my friends, I see my family, I see my boyfriend, but I pass my exams. That is the beauty of effective and efficient study methods, especially if you're someone who is not focused on getting in the top 5% of their year. I have had a much more rewarding five years in medical school than I did in sixth form because I've built up incredible relationships, been on holidays, honestly had the time of my life and not really stressed about how I was gonna do in my exams. Those are my big weaknesses. Didn't go in school, didn't know how to study. What else was I f up because I felt like the teachers one didn't like me and two I felt like I didn't want to seem stupid because I'd done so on my GCSEs like I just kind of felt like oh like you're the smart girl like you can't like really ask for help like you should just know this so I just didn't ask for help ever like I'd just do my homework and get every single question wrong and I just wouldn't ask for help it was just the most ridiculous thing and so immature and this brings me on to step two of the Sam Smith which is to swallow your pride and ask for some help. Analyzing what went wrong is one thing, but you should also get another perspective on what went wrong and what actions you should take from people who know better than you. Now, ideally, this should be your teachers. Most teachers don't want to see you fail, but also I don't know what your teacher's like. And if you don't feel comfortable asking your teacher for help, then ask other people in your class. This was another barrier that I had because I felt like every time I'd ask someone else in my class, I felt like I was just taking because actually I was so far behind that I didn't really feel like I had anything to give. But the more that I've learned about study methods and also the more that I've been someone that people have asked for help from, I've realised that the vast majority of people do have this intrinsic urge, not only to help other people, but also it's a bit of an ego boost if you come to them and ask them for help. Obviously, like, don't take the piss. Don't just ask people for their notes and stuff and kind of ride off their coattails, but just remember that there are people in the same boat as you and they will probably need your help at some point in time. Swings and roundabouts, guys. If you've asked your teacher, you've asked other people in your year, you've asked other people in your class and still you're struggling, then cast the net wider. If not, do this as well. Social media is an incredible resource for studying. Reddit, Twitter, Facebook groups for people doing different courses. Maybe you're the only person doing your course in your school, I don't know. The internet can obviously be quite scary and damaging place, but it is also an incredible resource for connecting hundreds of thousands of students across the country and the world. So you've reached out to these three groups of people and the questions I think it's really important to ask these people is definitely, I mean, your teachers asking what they think went wrong and where they think you could improve, but also how they recommend you study or if it's a classmate or a student across the country, ask them how they study. Also ask them for how long they study for because if they are studying for 12 hours a day and they are scraping a C, let's write off their studying methods. But if they're studying for an amount of hours that you would see as attainable for you and they're getting the grades that you wanna get, then that is the most valuable piece of advice that you could get. Ask them what resources they use. There are so many resources that I use in medical school that aren't my lecture notes or textbooks. Actually, to be completely honest with you, I do not remember the last time I looked at my lecture slides and I haven't opened a textbook since first year. And that's definitely because I have an incredibly short attention span and I like things condensed, compact, and as effective and efficient as possible. But that just proves my point. We're not all built to learn things from teachers and textbooks and classrooms. We're all different, but the only way that you're gonna uncover these God tier resources is by asking around, asking people what works for them, what they rate, what they don't rate, what they pay, what is worth the money, what's not worth the money, and branching yourself out until you find something that works for you.
Step number three of the Sam Smith is to set out a plan of actionable points that are going to help you get towards your goal. Based on your own analysis of what went wrong, what your teachers have said, what your peers have said, what the internet has said, you should now have a blueprint of all your areas of weaknesses and what you can do to fix them. I hope this video hasn't been too disheartening and it has felt more empowering than a stern telling off from your mum. I know I've said this a couple of times, but the reason I've probably been a little bit harsh is because I wish someone had given me this talking to a little bit sooner. If you did want to learn a little bit more about the effective and efficient study methods that got me through medical school, then I will link some videos below and I'll also link my ebook as well, which is basically explaining why I haven't taken notes of the whole of medical school and how I study instead. Please could you leave an emoji of a big red cross, a big red cross, because we're all failures here, but we're not going to be failures for much longer because we watched this video. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to join the community. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week and I will see you in the next video. Mwah!